Yo guys and welcome back to another episode of Pod Ghost. So guys, today we're so pleased to bring onto the show multi-talented songwriter, singer, composer, absolutely everything. Multi-talented is everything. <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. That's cool in the show. Uh, bro, Nish. why are you guessing me out so much, man? <laughs> Come on, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nish, yeah. my brother, thank you so much for coming on. That's my pleasure, First man. Thanks foremost. for having me, man. No, of course. Bro, tell us more, man. We want to know, we always like starting off by guests. Cool, man. From the beginning of your amazing journey up to now bro in the music industry yeah man for sure tell us bro how your love for music started we're gonna go we're gonna, dive we're, we're gonna take it right back <laughs> right, so, right back. Uh, so music love so i've been singing a lot of people probably know those that don't know i've been singing since i was five years old right so um, since i could remember I've been, I've been i've been singing nursery well, rhymes, it, bro <laughs> trust me i used to bang out all the nursery rhymes i used to make sure you know they're all nicely <laughs> toned and sang but yeah, no, I sang it in his own way. Ah, bro, I was doing all of the roars in the nursery rhyme and all of that stuff. <laughs> now, nah, but basically, I'll, I'll give credit. Like, shout out to my mum, man. She's the one that obviously saw it yeah. was something that my mum's the kind of person, yeah, that when she sees someone is good at something, she'll try and push them towards that. Like, my 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 family history is crazy because those that uh, that know me, I've, there's four siblings. I'm the youngest of four, right? Right. And um, I got the eldest, my eldest brother. I got my two sisters, and it's me. Yeah. But everyone is like. Four and, so my brother's the eldest, I'm the youngest, but f there's four and a half years gap between me between and him. Between all of you? No, between me and him. Oh, wow. So okay. imagine everyone's like one year, one year, one year, one year. So yeah, we're yeah. all kind of like the same age. We all have like the same friend group and it's, it's nice. Alhamdulillah. I'm, Alhamdulillah. I'm, 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 really, I'm really grateful for that. Obviously like big up to my mum dealing with, you know, <laughs> of course, four man. kids <laughs> all under the age of five at one point. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. So we all kind of, we were all part of this like singing group, this Bengali singing class, right? Right. It's all right. That can stay. That's but an expensive call. <laughs> you might pick it up, man. That's all right. No, don't worry, brother. I'm going to go check it after the podcast, yeah, yeah, see if yeah, there's yeah. a crack. No, you know, right now, when it drops here, you're thinking, I am not turning that over. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not turning it over now. It'll be fine anyway, bro. Yeah, yeah. That phone gets beaten up anyway, man. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the four of us, my mom took us to like a... So, my, my parents, they're not singers, but they are... Oh, my dad, he's got a great voice. If you ever hear my oh, dad wow, sing, okay, he's, got, yeah. he's got an amazing voice. That's an exclusive. Yeah, he's, he's got an amazing voice. Um, but they're not like professional singers, anything like that. They yeah. are just lovers of culture. And there's a word in Bangla called Shanskiti, which basically means like it's, it's, culture, it's culture. It involves like, you know, poems and, you know, literature and music. No, I get so that. Bengali yeah, yeah. people like that are into it. Like, we've got a very rich history. You know, like we've got um, our national uh, poet and we've got people like, you know, Robin Donat Tagore, uh, Kobi Kazin Ozul Islam, Lo uh, Shah Abdul Karim, people that, like, again, I'm just giving a history lesson, but yeah, it's good, yeah, yeah. we've got a very yeah. rich history pre-71 yeah. and, you know, pre the divide as well. Yeah. Um, and and, nice and, and Bengal has yeah. always been like the area where a lot of literature, a lot of singers come, come from as well. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you guys follow Bollywood, you know, Arjit Singh, Shraya Ghoshal, yeah, yeah, Sonu Nigam. These guys are all Bengali. Rani they Mukherjee. come from Bengal, yeah. yeah, yeah Rani Mukherjee, yeah, they're yeah, all yeah, yeah. from Bengal. Bipasha Basu, right? Wow. They're, all, they're all from Bengal. So we got a very rich... Uh, cultural history when it comes to like singing and, and, and arts. Sorry, bro, I just cut you on that. On, I, on. I just, what, two days ago, I went to a cinema. Right. And I just watched that new film, um, Rocky or Rani. Oh, yeah, you're telling and me about that. The yeah. girl in there is actually Bengali as well. No way. And the whole I've family, not seen it, no. and the whole family actually uses like Bengali um, lingos and Bengali culture in the film as well. I've seen so it's that. Quite, it's There's a, a film that I movie. watched actually. In fact, there was a girl, uh, Mrs. Chatterjee. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, Rani Mukherjee. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. she speaks in Bangla in it as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, 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 it's crazy. Like the whole Bangla scene as a general mm. is starting to really come up now. But we'll yeah. speak about all that. We'll, in the big we'll speak on, about bro. that because I got lots to yeah. say about yeah, it. But yeah, coming back to my kind of family background. So my parents have always been like I come from a Muslim Sileti Bengali background, right? So obviously we've always had that kind of. Islamic upbringing as of well. Of course. Um, and at the same time, you know, we, we've always kind of done things with, uh, to limits, if that makes sense. You yeah. know, people have differing opinions on it or whatever, and you know, each to, each to their own. But I feel like with us as, you know, we've, we, we've always kind of stuck to kind of, my mum had a blueprint with all four of us, innit? Yeah. But as we reached a certain age, you know, the, the, the four of us, you know, the rest of my siblings weren't really interested in like music and stuff anymore. They've yeah. always been musically like Influenced. aware yeah. and influence, but they weren't really singing or anything like that as well. Um, so then at, f at five years old, I always kind of kept it. And I and credit to my mum, you know, as I got a bit older and you know, when you hit like 12, 13 and you get into secondary school and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. singing in Bengali and stuff, it, it becomes not cool as much anymore. Of you course. know, the whole quote unquote not cool. So then I was a little bit like, oh, do I really want to carry on doing this? You know, my mum used to take me to like, you know, these Saturday schools where we're learning like uh, Bengali singing classes and stuff. 
And I don't know, I, at that point, I was the only guy at that, at that point. It was all either little kids or, you know, or grown men. And I was like the only person in my age category. Yeah. And, and funnily enough, on the flip side, I grew up in late in East London. So big growing up... Big up East London. Yeah, that's it. East London boys, man. <laughs> and growing up, that was when grime was very underground. And it was mm-hmm. the, it was the up and coming, uh, the, 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 the kind of uh, emergence of grime. It was yeah, a very yeah, underground, thing, underground thing. And I got into rapping then. So I thought I was an MC. You know, like back in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'll give you a good story. Um, in our school, we weren't allowed. Um, I went to school in Leighton and we weren't allowed to bring phones in because there was a lot of crime with phones. Back then, you know, people had the W810i, Sony, yeah, Sony yeah, Ericsson yeah, yeah. phone, the Nokias and this and that. Legendary and people phones. used to just get robbed. So they used to not bring them into school and they used to ban them completely from school. Mm. So what we used to do, one place that they never used to check had been like the boys' toilets. So we'd go there, someone would pull out W810i, you know, W800, and they had these Stimpy and Screwface beats. That's you know it. about yeah, the yeah, Stimpy yeah. and Screwface beats? <laughs> and they used to play them and then there was like, in a circle, people used to spit bars over it. I don't know what we were saying, bro, but we were just saying whatever, you know, like, <laughs> man's from Leighton, man's, man rep ends and, you know, just like random lyrics <laughs> yeah, 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 with yeah. no substance. But that really taught me... In fact, that was a big part of my influence because I grew up listening to a lot of, you know, a lot of noughties R&B and hip hop. Yeah. A lot of um, musical influences, I would say, from the rap scene. I listened to like a lot of old school Drake. This is when Drake was first coming out, but I, Drake came a little bit later. I was listening to 50 Cent, The yeah, Game, yeah, yeah. T.I., you know, Cassidy, all of these people that probably a lot of these youngsters m- might not even have heard of Eminem. Eminem yeah. exactly. big influence the goal back then when I was when I was kind of coming through I, T.I. had a massive you know that whole AT, that, the whole crunk yeah, yeah 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 it was exactly. massive you know back then when I was growing up the south side ATL music scene that was popping Lil John, you know um, the whole crunk music yeah, yeah I remember yeah, that, that yeah 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 that was all like top of its game yeah. so I grew up listening to a lot of that stuff and obviously you had the R&B so the R&B obviously Brand new kid on the scene, 16 year old Chris Brown. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That's when he was, you know, dropping, you know, his first album with Run It and Yo and all of yeah, these yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah. All of these big songs. Yeah. Like, like you guys know, innit? 100%, yeah. Yeah, I'm a bit on. older, innit? No, so, no. like, I'm giving away my age here. But that's what, like, that's where I really kind of had my musical influences from. Like, there was this group, I don't know if you lot remember, they came out, uh, they were, it's called ATL. They won like a competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. There was yeah, three yeah. of them. I used to like, listen to those a lot. Yeah. Like when Bow Wow had his like Unleashed album. I don't know if you know. Yeah, 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 remember course, all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that was a lot of the stuff I was listening to. And then the UK flip side. So I had a lot of UK influences from like Kano, Getz, um, you know, DWE, you know, who, you know, I'm talking about the real, the real guys from East London. Yeah, yeah, And then because yeah. I was from the other side, like I'm from the late side, so we had like more fire crew, Lethal B. So solid, so solid, yeah, yeah so yeah, solid. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So solid were like for me like trendsetters. For, they for, were like, like garage, like, weren't they? That was more. I would say that was though. more UKG. You know, like <laughs> yeah, Twenty One yeah, yeah, Seconds yeah. and Broken Silence. Like yeah, exactly. Um, and then like. Blazing Squad as well. I don't know if oh, you don't remember Blazing Squad. Squad. Yeah, yeah. Blazing Squad. That, I that the, these that, are like Channel U days. They were iconic. <laughs> Devlin. Bro, I love yeah, Devlin. Yeah, Devlin yeah, was, yeah. you know, it's mad because he follows me now, innit? I'm like, I get gassed. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. I get gassed in it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's true. When you watch I someone, still, I yeah. still think when they follow you back, even even if they're probably old now and probably yeah, moved on. 100%, yeah. You, you know, if they follow you now, you're like, whoa, man, I used to look up to you, bro. Yeah, exactly. Bro, working with exactly. Scorcher was for me, like, that was crazy because I, I, I used to listen to Scorcher a lot and then when I had a tune with him, I was like, yo, like, this is that's big. That's mental, yeah. That's big Scorcher, big you know. Things, man, yeah. So, yeah, like, for me, these are the things that really kind of, you know, um, that were, I would say, r- built the foundation of my music. Yeah. So I had, like, two ends. I had the classical Asian stuff because I did a diploma in, um, I'm classically trained in Indian uh, classical so like rags and rawas and all yep, of that stuff yep, i made that. sure i went to the bovin center in west kensington as i got a bit older i learned it and when i got to that stage at like 12 13 it was really make or break for me because i thought if i don't carry this on then mm. i'll never carry it on mm. but if i do you know i might be onto something here and um obviously having the urban uk influence i was like yo how do i make how do i bring these worlds together yeah of course because for me music's always been an international language like like truth be told and a lot of people don't even know this yeah. as well my bollywood knowledge stinks that's rubbish serious rubbish bro i i think my my like my first ever bollywood film that i could remember watching was um kabi kushi kabi gum Has i watched be, yeah. it in 99 in bangladesh for the first time uh, uh, you know, kab- uh, kabi kushi kabi gum. Uh, no, sorry, I beg your pardon. Not kabi kushi kabi gum. Kuch kuch hota hai. That was the first oh, one. Oh yes, yes, yes. Rewind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kuch kuch hota hai. That was the first one. Legendary then kabi kushi kabi gum, and then um, 
yeah, like I didn't really watch too many Bollywood films. Doom, Doom was like iconic. I felt yeah. like, okay, yeah, yeah. You but know, you haven't seen none of the I haven't old, really old school seen, ones. Yeah, yeah, I haven't really seen the old school ones. Okay, because again, like I was cool in two worlds, kind of. You know, I was, I was like, I was very much involved in the kind of hip hop and the urban side and the bangla side, but I never really had much of an exposure to Bollywood like that or yeah. like anything outside of the two realms that I knew. So that was interesting for me because as I got older, and we'll come to that, is because after I got into you know, the Desi music scene. Yeah, yeah. That's when my eyes opened and my ears opened. I was like, whoa. I was just going to mention that because when I heard some of your covers, yeah. I was like, nah, there's no way you don't know nothing about Bollywood. It's man. mad because, because <laughs> and, and, and we'll get to that, obviously. I know, I know yeah, you guys yeah. got questions of, of, yeah, how, of I, how, I, how I got to there. Of course. But that, that is an interesting story in itself. So they, coming back to like wrapping up my, like my whole childhood thing, yeah. that was basically what was, and I got to give credit to my mum because at that age, at 12 and 13, most guys would have been like, nah, I'm not on this. Especially if they're going and trying to be cool, rapping, you know, at school and doing this and doing that. Doing that whole Bengali stuff. That wasn't cool, bro. No, of course. Big that up to you cool. for keeping it up, though. That wasn't cool. But I'll tell you one thing. I've got to give credit to my mum. I've got to give credit to my um, my head of year, who's also my music teacher in, in my school. Yeah. Uh, shout out to her, Joe Gibbs. Um, yeah. I used to hate her in school. You know what? I used to hate her in school because she used to always nag me, man. Yeah. Always, you know, you know them as uniform and all of that stuff. Yeah, always yeah, used yeah. to nag me. But i got to give it to her because she got me involved in something because there was a GCSE curriculum in GCSE music, which I was doing, where they learn about Indian Raga. And funny enough, because I had, um, I had knowledge in that, she made me basically run the class. And at first I was okay. like, what do you mean? Like, I don't, don't want to do it. But after I'd done it, you know all of that, you know all the bad mans in school yeah. that were like, that didn't really get it. When they saw that I had the confidence to go up and like, bring the harmonium out, bring the tabla out, explain to them what a tal is, explain to them what rag is. Yeah, yeah. They were like, yo, like ratings to you, bro. Like, 100%. this is knowledge, innit? Like, yeah, exactly. And, and after that, I thought, do you know what? Yeah, like, I, 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 I rate this. the fact yeah, that yeah, I yeah. know this, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I got exactly. a bit of knowledge on, on yeah, people. Yeah. So yeah, man, that was childhood for me, man. That's how it started. And that's how it's been going, man. See, a lot of people would know that about you. No, I, I didn't yeah. know when that. They, yeah, exactly, yeah. you'd be surprised that, you know. You know like, yeah, bro. Man. <laughs> that's why I'm here, bro. I'm here, to, <laughs> I'm here to drop some gems, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, bro, you know what? Obviously, moving on from, you know, you growing up now. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the next question is quite inevitable. Yeah. You joining into the whole, you know, the Desi scene, the yeah, Asian man. music industry. And then, bro, I, I know, in such a short amount of time, becoming an established mm, artist in this industry where I thought like it's taken some, some people well majority of artists such a long time to get what you've got yeah. Yeah. and you've eclipsed a lot of them you know in the sense of your numbers and your streams or whatever I want to know how you got into this industry and how you found the journey of like a transition you know what I'm going to say though isn't it Go you know it. what I'm going to say <laughs> there's uh, on my you know if I was to ever do ah oh, this sounds so I don't, I don't want it to go uh, to, <laughs> to go another way but you know, at the end of my career, if I was to write down two names, yeah. I would say, I'm going to say two names um, that basically said that I could turn around and be like, this career happened because of these two people. Yeah. The first name would be Mumsy Stranger. Big There's not Mumsy, even a Mumsy Stranger. There's yeah, a, yeah. like, that's, that's goes without saying, no matter where I go and where I come back, I've got to give M Mumsy the... I, and he, you know, he's the kind of guy, yes, you know him. He yeah. won't take the credit. He'll be like, nah, bro, nah, it was bro, all yeah. you, man. It was your work. <laughs> yeah, it was your yeah, work yeah, and yeah. this and that. Nonsense. Mumsy Big opened up, the door for me. Big up, man. He opened the door for me because he saw, he said one thing and stuck with me. He goes, bro, I see you in me. Wow. Like, sorry, no, I beg your pardon. Not, I see me in, in you. you, yeah. <laughs> I, see, I see a young me in you. I knew how, you know, Mumsy, you're like, Mumsy was on this podcast. You know his journey. Yes, you know man. what it is to be Mumsy stranger, bro. Mm. And I'm telling you, and I'll say it till the cows come home. He knows this to a point. He will probably message me after, bro, why are you gassing it so much? But <laughs> yeah. bro, I'm telling you, Mumsy stranger is the reason why I'm where I am. One of the, re one of the main reasons. And the only other name I'm going to mention because this is the person that introduced me to Mumsy stranger is Nadia Ali. Nadia introduced yeah. me to Mums, and I've known Nadia since my childhood. So we've had a very close family Nadia relationship. Ali, Nadia, Nadia like, me. introduced me to Mumsy, and, yeah. and, and from that, she said, look, I can't, look, brother, I don't know music like the way, like that way. I, yeah. I'm, I'm a radio DJ, I understand it, but for me to make you into the potential, fulfill the potential that we think you've got. Let me introduce you. I need to introduce you to someone that's going to take you to the next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's always said, I, re I want you to meet Mumsy, I want you to meet Mumsy. And when I met Mumsy, it was, it was like, yeah, like, it, it, the rest is history, man. Like, 
I'm telling you, you know, I'm going to go back to the story, yeah? And this story, I, I think a few people have heard, like, me speaking in person, but I've never actually, like, come on live and, and, and online or, like, publicly and said how I've met Mumsy. You know, the first time I met Mumsy back, was back in 2013. I met him because um, I had booked him <laughs> for a show Serious? that I was organizing, yeah. Okay. I was the one that was, you know, <laughs> you know the guy, the point of contact. <laughs> yeah. But let me tell you something. I never told him I did music. I never told him because... Um, a- another person that comes into this as well, which is crazy, um, DJ Itz. Now, DJ Itz yeah. is, is, is an interesting one. Itz, 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 Itz is an interesting <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. Because, so, Itz is from my ends, isn't it? Yeah. He's, from, he's from my manor. And Itz and my older brother, Naeem, they both went secondary school together. They were in the same class and the same form. So they knew him. My, my brother knew him as his govy name, not as it's. He was like, bro, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I beat him up. Yeah, big ass, <laughs> I, was like, I don't want to beat him up. He knew him as his govy name. So when he saw him, he was like, yo, what are you doing here? So that, that, that program was in 2013. It was, yeah. it was at the Decorium, actually. It was at this charity event that we, we organised after me coming off from... <laughs> story from uh, I was on a reality TV show in Bangladesh in 2012. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, it was called Forgotten Roots. And um, it, was, uh, it was with five boys and five girls from all over UK, US and Europe. And the concept was you go back to the Pind, or, in, yeah, yeah. or the Gao in, Bang- yeah, in Bangla yeah, yeah. terms. You b- go back to the Gao and uh, you live in mud huts and there's cameras wow. all over you. You get your phones and all your <coughs> stuff taken away from you and you live like a villager. And you earn points based on you know milking cows, cutting no the, 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 the grain and the villagers come and they grade you on it out of 10. So I was on this reality TV show back in 2012 and 11. Did you win it? I didn't. I came second. Oh, wow. I came second. Cool. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Most people actually say I should have. A lot of people, yeah. a lot of people say that I, I, I was wrong. So what was, if people want to judge that? So what if people want to watch that or we want to watch that? Uh, you can go on YouTube and type in Forgotten Roots Bangladesh, but people know it as my Govy name, innit? Yeah. Do you know what? So my name is Nishat, right? Yeah. And um, Nish is just short for Nishat, but everyone calls me Nish. And uh, then I basically put my name as Nishat. So everyone's like, oh, Nishat this, Nishat that. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. It, it was mad because like, I, was, uh, I was 18, bare-faced, clean <laughs> shape, skinny boy. You know what? I was wearing like these mad clothes. You know, back in yeah. the days when the chinos and the, and the, Hollister, and the, and the Hollister tops were in fashion and that. Yeah. I was wearing all of that. I had a quiff. You know, like, I was wearing like these shades, bro. But bro, if you, if you want a good laugh and you want to watch it, go check it out. It's called Forgotten Roots. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, uh, it's too it funny, out, yeah. bro. There was one episode where I caught a fish with one bare hand. Serious? Uh, bro, it's crazy. And and it's, imagine. Not, it's not fixed or anything. It is what no, you see. No, no, bro. It's, fi- it's, it's literally, it's so mad because like, we're like screaming and shouting and swearing on it as well. Because okay, like, yeah, imagine yeah. taking like teenagers and kids, like when thing goes... When it's proper natural. Can, yeah. can, yeah. can I curse on this? Can I? But when shit hits the fan, bro, people are like effing and blinding, like, oh, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, this and that. Like, and there's proper beef. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. capturing it. They're like, yo, they're capturing it. <laughs> and they're releasing it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, they're capturing and releasing it. So it was based in Bangladesh and, and they done it. Like, Was it on like Bangladesh TV? It was on Bangladesh primetime TV, bro. ATN Bangla, it was on primetime. It was on the geo of Bangladesh. Wow. It was on like serious things, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was happening is back then, that's when I got my first little bit of fame. As in like people recognize me in White Chapel High Street. Oh, are you on that show? This yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. It was mad. But then <laughs> it basically, after that period, we did like a charity event after that, off the, right. off the back of it. And that's where we booked Mumsy. We said, yo, we want to get Mumsy to come. Like they suggested it. Met Mumsy there. It was basically the DJ for Mumsy at yep, the time. Yep, yeah. And the funniest thing is, is there was mad sound issues, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> so, shit. you know what happens when there's a sound issue? You look at the DJ. Mumsy yeah, goes, yeah. Mumsy goes, bro. And it's on his rider and, and, and all musicians. If there's, if there's an issue with the sound, bro, yeah. it's on their rider that they don't have to perform, bro. Or yeah. they, they do, they can cut it short. Yeah. So what happened was there was an issue with the sound. And then I came apologetically. I went to Mums. I go, bro, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't realize, you know, that it was going to be like that. There was, a, there was another brother that was doing it. I don't know. I don't want to bait him up, but he was yeah, doing yeah. it, but he messed the whole thing up. <laughs> he messed up the whole base. He fucked the whole thing up. Do you yeah. bait him up now? No, no, no. Do you know what? Allow him. I don't like baiting people up in it. Yeah. But allow him. He probably doesn't do any of that anymore. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's gone on to. He's gone on to do it. But I think after that, he never wanted to do that ever again. <laughs> he thought that he got the raffle of Mumsy then. You know that? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like. And I was apologetic to Mumsy. Mumsy was like, do you know what, bro? No, it's not your fault. Like, and then it's obviously so my brother. He goes, oh, Naeem, what are you doing here? He goes, no, that's my younger brother. Like, he goes, oh, what? And then, then it came out because I was also performing on that thing. He goes, what are you singing? I go, yeah, what are you singing in? I go, I was singing in Bengali. But I think I also, you know me, yeah, I got a little bit of, what's the word for it, man? There's a Bengali word. It's called, it's like Haya Sharam. But it also means like, you know, like, Sharam, like a little bit of Sharam. You know, um, like, the, oh, you know what? Do you know what it is? For me, 
Mumsy's, yeah, mine as well. Mumsy's here, innit? Mumsy's up here. Yeah, like, yeah. For me, growing up. Shy. When, you when, basically become a bit shy. I was shy, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, shy. I was shy. I'm like, yo, yeah, you're the guy. Right. I'm like, you, you, when it comes to Bengali yeah. music, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, I you. Agree. Yep. It's you. Like, who mm. is bigger than you? Who did one more dance? Yeah. And never, who's bigger than you? So for me, now if I show you, I'm scared that, bro, if you don't like it, I don't want to lose like a, I don't want you to also think that I'm here to show you my music. But bro, I'm here to respect you. Of course. I shook your hand, bro. No, I, I gave you that, salam. Bro. I was like, bro, I look up to you, bro. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, you're the guy. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I didn't have all of Mumsy's music on, on repeat or on play. I had a few songs like One More Dance. You know, there was an unreleased song called Candy. There was like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, I feel get you to know bro. all of these songs. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, had, I had a few of them. I was like, nah. Yeah. I, cause I, so, and I bought the CD. And I think more so is because he's from where you're from. Of course. So I, you I, have that connection, I, don't you? you? Uh, yeah, let me tell you something. You know how you know it's mad and the respect level was there. I bought the CD during LimeWire days. Wow. I bought his yeah, CDs yeah, yeah, yeah. during LimeWire days where I was ripping everyone's music, but his ones I bought. I was like, nah, bro. Go, go. No, no, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, bro yeah. That's, that's, that's our people. That's G yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had no idea who was even Sility. How about that? Wow. I thought maybe he's from another part of Bangladesh or whatever, but I had no idea he was Sility. I had no idea who's from East London. I had no idea he's from a similar area to me in Bangladesh. Wow. That's wow. mad. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So there's that. I, I got bad stories from Mumsy, but I'll tell you the, the defining few, right? So that was one of the stories. So I ended up performing and he left. He didn't get to hear. Fine. Fine, right? yeah. Fast forward 2015, um, I went with Nadia to a big show in Birmingham, NEC Arena, right? They was doing that big Bengali show, I think it's called Bangla Beats, yeah? Yeah. I was doing that, and, and I think by then Mumsy released Circles. So yeah. the song Circles, he yeah, released yeah. it. And that's when um, I was doing like interviewing stuff. So I was doing some stuff as a presenter because, you know, like I had like a few, I had a few skill sets that I was just trying to explore, see where yeah, I was yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. And Nadia brought me on. She was like, oh, come, um, you know, you're, you're quite good at speaking and stuff. You should come and do Vox Pops and stuff. There's like artists there. There's uh, one of the biggest artists in Bangladesh called Habib Wahid. He was there. Ridoy yep. Khan. Yep. These guys were there. Mumsy, you know, free, very, very, you know, of course, yeah. notable very artists. Very known people, yeah. Very notable artists. And I was like, oh, Mumsy again. Oh, wicked. So you haven't seen him since that last? I haven't seen him since 2013. Okay, yeah, yeah. And um, so then, yeah, I met him. So when I went there, um, and Mums, if you know Mums, yeah, if you know Mums properly, yeah, my guy, he will see a face, but he will forget about the face. <laughs> if he doesn't see it, he'll be like, oh, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then after, he, you can just tell it, it's left his head. Yeah, yeah. Like, he'll be like, oh, bro, forgive me, I meet so He's many just people. trying to be respectful. Do you know what it is? Yeah, he's a yeah, very yeah. respectful guy. Yeah, yeah. But you can't blame him, bro. He meets so many people. Imagine. Of course. He's probably like thinking, bro, like, I can't remember. Like, yeah, and yeah. it happens with me as well. Like, yeah, of course. Genuinely, you meet so many people. Yeah, of course. So imagine, yeah. So Nadia is now taking me to meet Mumsy. She goes, are oh, you take Mum, uh, meet Mumsy and you know I was like oh cool it'd be cool to meet him and um, met him there and then uh, I met DJ Lion there as well so that's when I first got to know DJ yeah, Lion yeah, yeah, and yeah. this story is now now having having an interesting turn right so I met Mumsy Mumsy like oh bro you're right nice to meet you I was like oh I actually met before at the, at the Mar Awards he goes oh bro yeah yeah man oh wicked how you been oh wicked so now they introduced you goes Mumsy you know thing. and they were coming out of their hotel room at that time I think they had like they were all staying on the same floor yeah. in, in Birmingham. It was on New, New Street. It was quite a nice hotel. All yeah. staying on the same floor, and they're all coming out. And they're coming out now, and I see Mumsy is basically taking these. Like, you know, if you know Mumsy, he likes taking like studio gear with him everywhere. Yeah, Find, yeah, like, yeah. Speakers, microphone, wherever he goes, he just takes it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just takes it. He just makes a gun out there, and then yeah, then he's that's like, it. Yeah. Smashes out a beat. Smashes <laughs> it out, right? And I see Mumsy, and I had no idea about his. Um, I think he spoke about about his health issues. Yeah, about yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. vertical, vertical and stuff. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. And I had no idea about this, right? But he was carrying this bag, and it was a heavy bag. It was big. There was two, three of them on his back, and he's walking down. He wasn't taking the lift because he was busy. He was taking the stairs, and I just stopped him. I go, "Bro, give me a bag, man." Yeah. yeah. Oh, give me a bag. And he gave me the bag, and then took it down the stairs. And then little did I know how significant that me taking the bag will be for him. What, what was right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had no idea about his health. I just thought, ah, oh, bro, yeah, the child is struggling, bro. Yeah, let me go yeah, and help yeah, exactly, it. Like, yeah, bro, I see I'm like, yo, let me take it. Like, yeah, yeah, I could tell he was str he was sweating, bro, <laughs> trying to go down those stairs. And he went and then he loaded it into his car. And then once he loaded it into the car, I said, oh, cool, bro. Wicked, man. Get on with your day. Like, I was like, yeah, man. That, yeah, was, yeah, that was it. He was, going, he was going for lunch and I was just going to figure out what I was going to do. He goes, bro, where are you going? I go, no, I'm just going to, you know, I was going to go grab some. Like, he was like, yeah, man, we're going lunch. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. He goes, no, no, come with us. Come and eat with us. What do you want? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What are you going to get? I was like, bro, I was just going to get 
chicken and chips in it. Like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, them yeah. ones, bro. Straight up. Bro, bro, back then, bro, back then I was working in JD Sports, bro. Yeah. And I, and, and I was, whatever money I was making, I was, uh, I had my first card and I had a Voxel Corsa. Yeah. And my first, whatever money I made in JD Sports, I was lucky because they paid weekly. Whatever, whatever little bit of money I made, bro, from working part time, I just pay on the car. You know, insurance and petrol and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, of course. So, you know, like, Hand getting, to mouth. You know what's mad? Yeah. You know, but, but wallahi, I'm not even lying to you. I don't even think I had a train ticket to get back. I don't think I had, I had enough money to get to have a train ticket to get back to London there. Because I was thinking, oh, bro, like it was going to be long or whatever. I was going to basically get, you know, one of those Chilton Railways where it stops yeah, back yeah, yeah. 50 times yeah, yeah, yeah. and takes like three, four hours on the train. Yeah. I was going to get one of those. And I didn't at the time. And I was figuring at the time, I was, thinking, I was like, you know what? If I get lunch, I should get a little chicken and chips. You know, like, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. three wings Them and days chips will be back. one pound, like one quid. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Chalo, I'll be all right. For <laughs> Them the, days are long gone. I'll though. be cool for the, <laughs> bro, I'll be cool for the, for the time. He goes, no, nah, bro, what do mm. you want? I was like, oh, bro, like, no, it's cool. I, I don't want to impose. He goes, no, no, come with me, man. Come and get, um, come, come. we're going to get some food. Yeah. So I went with him, jumped in his car, drove to a food spot. And then at the time, because you know, I'm not going to lie to you. Wallahi, I'm not lying. I was hesitant to go because I didn't want him to pay. I was like, bro, if I go somewhere, I might not be able to, how am I going to, if it's like 30, 40 quid, bro, how am I going to pay for this? Food? Yeah, of course. How are you going to afford it? I'm yeah, telling yeah, you, bro. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling bro, I'm bottom of my heart. I'm not lying to you, bro. Yeah. When I went there, I was like, yo, how am I going to, how am I going to pay for this food? Because I, you know what it is? I was in uni then, innit? And yeah. I was learning, figuring out life and, you know, like, of course. you know, trying to, trying to get by, bro. Because I was, I was looking at, you know, I was studying computer science at the time and I was like, you know what? Inshallah, if I graduate, I'll get a corporate job and, 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 and uh, the salary will be good. And you know, I just was trying to get my life together. Of course, yeah. I had no plans of doing music back then. And then, but I was doing it as a hobby, you know, yeah, like yeah, it, was yeah, my, it was my thing. So I was worried that I wasn't even able to, to pay for food. And he was like, no, don't worry, bro, I got you. Because I asked him, I, you know, like, I asked him, like, yeah, yeah. Out, of, out of shyness. I said, bro, where, where are we going to go eat? Like, if, if it's like, if you're going to go, like, they, like that's cool, bro. Yeah, 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 it's cool, bro. You might want, what are you talking about? And I think he got a bit pissed off with me. He's like, bro, what are you talking about? Come with us. Who yeah, said yeah. you're paying? Well, who said, you're, you, who said you're pay, you were paying? I go, yeah, nah, yeah. Oh, bro, like, I don't want, he goes, no, 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 no. He was not taking no for an answer. You know how Mumsy is. That's typical, yeah. You know how Mumsy is. He's not <laughs> taking course. no. He goes, nah, bro, you helped me carry the bag. I'm going to feed you today. And bro, I was like, ah, cool, man. Oh, yeah. I went there. Bro, imagine I made the mistake of even trying to pay at the time. Damn. And bro, he grabbed me. He goes, don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. I was like, bro, I that's just didn't want to. I just didn't want to, like, you know, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, I, I'm not going to lie. No, bro. that's very nice of you as well, I was man. just trying to, you know, like. I didn't even these times say you know it's going to decline. You're thinking, yeah. I was just <laughs> like, bro, let me just try it, innit? Yeah, cool. Let me try it. And, and the truth is, bro, I'm the kind of person, I don't like being a liability or don't like imposing yeah, yeah, myself. Yeah. It's just the way that I'm brought up, bro. I don't like being a person that someone needs to look yeah, after. Mm. I feel that, bro. 100%. I don't like being that guy. And then when <clears> I went there, I was like, you know what? Cool. I ate. I was so grateful. And I, and I left him to it because I knew he had a show the following day. So he was performing. And then he was like, nah, bro, like, hang with us. He's like, who are you going to chill with? I was like, bro, I was just going to go back to my, my hotel room and, you know. Chill. Like, yeah, just like, yeah. relax. And, um, and yeah, he was just like, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, bro. We feel, well, what floor are you going to go? I'm no, no, come chill with us. Come chill with us. We're making tunes and stuff. I was like, oh, okay. Like, Would you say that's where your actual first connection came with Mumsy? I think, I, I, and, and I'm going to come back to the, it was from the stairs. You know, when I yeah, took the back, the that was yeah, the first, yeah. definitely the first connection. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because I did not know he was ill. Oh, okay. Yes, Fast yes. forward, he, was, he told me, he goes, bro, at that time, he goes, I was so sick. So sick. No one knew. But for some reason, bro, you came and you helped me. And at that time, bro, I needed someone to help me with that. With that. And wow. you just came along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just said, you, you, you owed nothing to me. That's deep, you bro. came along yeah. and you said, oh, bro, let me take your bag. Exactly. And that was, that's, that, he goes, that was a defining moment. But anyway, coming back to the day yeah. of the show now. So I've been hanging around with them, chilling and whatever. And, um, and I met DJ Lion at the time as well. Yeah, yeah. And obviously he was this young... Up and coming yeah. budding producer, you know, uh, just co-produced circles with Mumsy, and you know, it's he was he was like his protege, like yeah, he was yeah, the yeah. he was yeah, the yeah. protege that was kind of coming through. And I was like, you know, it's funny, I really connected with Lion because Lion and I are the same Good age. Kid he is. Yeah. yeah, we're the same age. We we're born in the same year, like we'll be in the same year at school. So first, immediately, I was like, oh, you know, when you meet someone that's in the same year at school as you, you just feel like you have a connection. You, you feel like you've got a, you feel like you've got like a thing with them in it. Like, yeah. so there was that. Secondly, he was into football. 
I'm mad into football. I'm a mad Arsenal fan. Yeah. You know, you, you know this, innit? Yeah, yeah. I'm a crazy Arsenal fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's also, he, I realised he was a bigger Arsenal fan than me. <laughs> he was like, oh, what? Then we start talking about football, talking about Arsenal. I was like, yo, this is mad. Like, and, you, and it wasn't even music. We weren't even talking about music. We spent half an hour just chatting about football. And he studied computer science at uni. Wow. I was yeah, very similar. He was at Brunel. I was at Queen Mary. I was yeah. like, what? I was like, yo, this is mad. Yeah. Bro, it turns out he lives in the same, well, he lives in East as well. Yeah. He's from similar ends to me. I was like, what? He lived 10 minutes from me. Shit. 10 minutes from me. I was like, I was like, yo, yeah. what, what, what the hell was going on here? Yeah. Anyway, then he goes to me, so what, like, so what brings you here? He asked me like, so it was like, and Mums was obviously re- getting ready and, and you know, all of that stuff uh, beforehand. So he was like, so what brings you here? I was like, yo, I come here with Nadia. I was doing some presenting and then, and the truth was, I didn't want to say that I did music. I didn't want to tell Mumsy I did music, but yeah. I felt like I had a connection with Lion. So I told Lion, I was like, yeah, man, I do like, a bit of music and stuff on, like, on the side. I was like, what? Bro, play some stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, 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 play me some stuff, man. This is Lion. Yeah. I was like, all right, cool. Like, you know, I feel like I've got a connection with you. Oh, yeah. I'll play some stuff to you. And I, there was this one song that I played him. It was like an unreleased song that I did ages ago. I never actually released that song. I might re- revisit it. But um, <laughs> I had this one song that I... I was singing in Bengali, but it had like, you know, like urban beats to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I played him that and he goes, oh, this is dope. Like, he goes, oh, what, who produced it? I go, oh, I produced it myself. Goes, what, you produced as well? Oh, I'm a producer, bro. Like, crazy, man. Oh, that's sick. So I was playing it. And then Mumsy basically, he's like half put his clothes on, bruv. Yeah. He's in the change room. He comes out, he goes, yo, what is that? Oh, you heard it as well, yeah? He heard it yeah, from yeah, the yeah. next room. He was like, yo, what is that? I was like, I was like, yo, uh, no, I didn't say anything. I was just a bit embarrassed. And he goes, and then Lion goes, oh, that's, that's from him. That's from Nish. Yeah. He goes, what? Are you singing in Bengali? I go, oh, yeah. I was, again, I was shy. I was shy. Like, yeah, 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 man. He yeah. goes, bro, I never heard Bengali like that, you know? He's like, this is really good. Yeah. That's what Mumsy said. From his side, he goes, yo, this is really, really good. Yeah. Like, who produced that? I go, oh, I produced myself. He goes, did you produce that? I go, yeah. How long have you been doing music for, bro? I said, since I was five years old, isn't yeah, it? Like, yeah. how long? Are you a singer? I go, yeah. He goes, bro, you got a really good voice. And then I was like, that must have know, been a gas moment. Oh, for bro, you, I was so yeah. gas, I couldn't hold it in. <laughs> yeah. Imagine I couldn't hold it in. I was like, what? Like, oh, thank you, bro. And I appreciate it. He goes, oh, like, come chill with us. Yeah. I was like, all right, cool. So he done the show, smashed it as Mumsy did. Yeah. And then I was supposed to basically go back the following day because I had a shift at, at JD the following day. And Mumsy was like, uh, I think he so was. So can I just pause you? So you're gone. So right now, Nish is not a music artist. Nah, on, bro. Online, nothing at the moment. Nah, bro. You're just still getting to know people. Bro, He's doing behind the scenes. He's doing behind the scenes. Yeah. This okay. is, you know, this is shit. No one's heard. Okay, yeah. yeah this yeah, is yeah, shit. Yeah. No one knows. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. telling you, lot like, from the, you know, the from core, the from yeah. the yeah, core, because yeah, yeah. because then it all makes sense. Then people will ask like, how this relationship came into fruition? Why of is yeah, why yeah. it's the relationship that it is? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Fast forward, like, no, sorry, not fast forward. Going back to that 2015 show in Birmingham, right? He smashed it. He's killed it. He's done it, right? I think we went to, um, I think the after party was like at a lounge in, in, in Birmingham. I can't remember where it was. Yeah. But um, everyone, everyone came there, right? Everyone, everyone and, and most people from the scene were there now. Mm. And they came there um, because there was, I think, a Brit Asia nomination party or something. Right. So, ages ago, <clears throat> Brit Asia nomination party. Yeah. I met so many people for the first time there, right? No one knew who I was. I was just like that guy that was there with Mumsy. Yeah. And this was at this, at this lounge or whatever. And we ate and we chilled, had a great time. You know, everyone was just chilling. I got to know, got to speak to Mumsy a little bit more. But I was very much, and, and, and I had this thing. And, and Mumsy even said it was like a test as well for me. Because in front of everyone, I didn't really, I wasn't really chatting about who I was or what I do or trying to put myself out there. I was just chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I came with a crew there. My crew was Mumsy, Lion. And I don't want to deviate from that crew. I'm not going to... I just met him. So I weren't trying to go there and start jump network everywhere. and start jumping around different crews. I was yeah. there with him. So I stayed with them. And I chilled with them. And I spoke with them. People ask me, hi, uh, what's your name? Yeah, Nish, nice to meet you. That, that was it. What yeah. do you do? Oh, bro, I'm just here with Mumsy. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, not yeah, even... Yeah, you know, yeah, again, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, here yeah. with Mumsy. Because yeah. do you know what it is? That goes along with... I, I, of course it does, You know, bro, that, yeah. that stuff, I, I already understood that of from course. the get-go. I was like, you know what? If you're giving me an opportunity here, I don't want to then throw it in your face. Of course. Yeah, man. Because bro, there's been times where that's happened. Yeah, of course. I'm so sure it's happened times, to you right? guys. It's of happened course. to me. It's happened to Mumsy. It's happened to everyone, right? And I didn't want to be that guy. You know, 
don't be that guy. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't be that guy or that yeah. girl. Don't be. Don't, don't be that be guy. That guy. Yeah. Because you get. You, don't be that guy. Don't, don't, don't be that, be that guy. guy. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not gonna be that guy. So anyway, I go there, now. <laughs> People were chatting to me, and then I had to go the following day. I was like, mums, do you know what, bro? Thank you so much. Like, I really appreciate you giving me time and showing me a good time, bro. I proper appreciate, it. bro. I proper look up to you, man. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan at the end of the day, whatnot. And he goes, bro, like, why'd you have to leave tomorrow? I said, oh, do you know what? I got a. Um, I got a shift at, I work at JD, innit? Um, I work at the Wood Green JD. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I work in Wood Green JD. Um, I got a shift tomorrow and I can't take over. I really need this job. If I can't make it, or if I can't get cover, then I will lose the job. Yeah. And then, you know, how am I going to, like, I got, I got a car, I got need to, yeah, I got bills to pay, yeah, man. Exactly. I got bills to pay, innit? Yeah. And then he was like to me, do me a favour, can you call in and see if you can get someone to cover you? So then I, I was like, uh, can you call, call off tomorrow? I was like, oh, I don't know. So I called up my boss. Now bless, do you know what? She was cool. As all real t retail bosses are, you have to be a certain way, right? Yeah, of course. You have to be a certain way. It is, yeah. It's the nature of retail, right? But she was cool. She knew I did music and stuff. And she was like, I was like, yo, her name was Igul, Turkish girl. I was like, yo, Igul, you know what? Uh, can, I, like, can I take tomorrow off? She goes, Nish, I'm going to be honest with you. We need you to come in tomorrow. Like, yeah. But I was like, do you know what it is? I've got an opportunity and I don't really want to like... Miss out on it. Miss out. She goes, look, I understand, but... Uh, she goes, unless you can get cover, I need to see you tomorrow. Like, you need to be in. Because we're short-staffed, it's summer, it's busy period. She was cool, but obviously she's got a job to do as well. Yeah, yeah of course, of I course. Don't wanna, she's like, I don't want to make my life harder as well, you know, by you yeah, not coming yeah. in and whatever. I was like, look, okay, I understand. I go, can I get back to you in half an hour and see if anyone can cover? She goes, all right, cool. You need to get back to me in half an hour with a cover. If not, Nish, you got to be in tomorrow. Yeah. I was like, all right. So I'm on a mission now. I called up all these people. And you know how Rito is, bro. Yeah, no yeah. one's friends, bro. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's exactly. like, like, to be fair, like, in all, in all honesty, like the Wood Green JD I worked at, everyone was kind of cool, innit? Everyone was blessed. Yeah. So it was okay. But, um, bro, when it came to like off days, ain't no one going to give up their off day for you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Not in that environment. Yeah. So I called up a few people. I'm like, yo, can you come in and work? Nah, man, sorry, I got... This. Shit to do. I got yeah. this. I got to walk my dog. Yeah, this and that. You know, do you know what I mean? Everyone from yeah, yeah, yeah. In in fairness, of course, I would have done the same. Yeah. Like, d don't get me wrong. Like in in if you when you got an off day, you got an off day, right? Yeah. And then there was like there's a few Bengalis that worked in the in in the Wood Green JD, and there was this one Bengali girl, and I got to give her a shout out to her Niyama Chowdhury man. Yeah. <laughs> I called her up, and and we were cool. Like she was like she was like one of my mates. I had a few mates in there. She was like one yeah. of my mates. Her another one of my brethren called Jamal, a Bengali guy. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. One of my school friends, Fahim, used to work there as well. Right. So like <clears throat> we already had like a little Bengali crew that was there. Yeah. It was either the Bengali crew or the Turkish crew. Everyone was cool with each other, but we had our we <laughs> had, had our own little crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I called up Neil. I called up Neil. I didn't even message. I called her. I was like, oh yo, what are you doing? She goes, oh no, I'm busy tomorrow, man. Allow it. I'm busy tomorrow. I was like, yo. Please. I'm with Mumsy. <laughs> she goes, what? Mumsy Stranger, the singer? I go, yeah. I go, look, I beg you, do me a favour. Take Cut my shift me. tomorrow, man. Yeah, yeah. I beg you, take my shift tomorrow. Look, the following day when I work with you, I'll buy you lunch. Don't worry. I'll, I got you lunch. Don't worry. Yeah. Just as me saying thanks. But I beg you, just like, do it. She was huffing and puffing. Oh, I had plans to do this. I was going to go meet my girls and this and that. I was like, please. Yeah. One, I just need this one, one thing from you. Yeah. She's like, Oh, Nish, man. What the hell? All right, fine. I'll do it. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, done yeah. it. I was like, sick. So I went to Mumsy. Imagine how significant that is. Exactly. That girl doing the Exactly. The she still talked to her. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah, She's good, like man. friends with one of my... So one of my first cousins um, uh, got married and uh, his wife is very good friends with her. Yeah. So she was at there, wasn't she? Like, what are you doing? I, and we were just chatting. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. what? What are you doing here, man? So I was still in touch with her. She's yeah, wicked. Yeah. Right? That's cool. And she sees it. She's like, you know what? Like, big up to I'm what you. I'm happy I took your shit. Oh, no, she, <laughs> she's she's wicked, wicked, yeah, like yeah. proper wicked girl. Anyway, um, so she done it, and I go to Mumsy. I go, yo, Mums, yeah, I've um, I patented it. I've patented it because yeah. I right, cool. Tomorrow we're going to the Brit Asia um, nominee party. Come with us. He goes, what garments do you have? I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> like. I just pulled like random. He goes, oh, but have you got like a shirt or anything nice? Yeah. I was like, I don't, but I can. He was like, I right, say no more. So I went there. I just bought like a shirt from Top Man. And, and, I, and then I, I basically, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I bought, yeah, I bought yeah. the shirt. So I'd like, went there. Again, same thing. People were chatting to him. There was better people there, bro. Yeah. There was like some big guys there, bro. Dr. Zeus was there. Like there was big pe yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, people you've watched or heard of. People yeah, that yeah, I've yeah. seen, bro. Like, and I, there was big guys there. Yeah. Went there. Obviously, Saw a new, opened my eyes to what this scene was. I was like, whoa, this is, this is, 
this is something, you know, like, this is interesting. There's loads of people, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you like, tickled with my fancy. Sort of yeah, 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 exactly. I, 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 even that, I think I was just intrigued. I was like, yo, is this what like being a musician is? So, or being an artist is this and that and Living the celebrity lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. But it's funny because one thing Mum's noticed is I didn't take any pictures. When I was there, I didn't, you know, I didn't take my phone out. I wasn't doing this, I wasn't doing that. Nothing. I wasn't doing any of that stuff. Let me just get a GoPro. No, do that, yeah, bro. Talking, it, bro. Yeah, bro. No, I love that, my brother. Yeah, exactly. It's for the podcast. See, this, oh, this, I'm not this, letting this, you lot do this, any talking, yeah. bro. Like, <laughs> no, no, we don't need you, bro. They have, yeah, you're you're, the, you. you're the guy. Bro, that, was that, that was the nom- nominee party. And then after we chilled and whatever, I was like, I need to get home. So I was looking on train line for, for train tickets to get home. Mums was like, yo, when, how you, where'd you live? I was like, East London. I was like, oh, bro, that's local. Yo, I can take you. I was like, what? Like, yeah, yeah man, we got yeah. a car. I'll drive you back to London, man. Deep, Leave local. Deep. It's nice Is to it? see that humble side because <laughs> you, you, you probably at that point probably thinking, but Mumsy's like some massive celebrity. Bro. Why yeah, is he going to ride the like, why are you taking me home? home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, why are you taking me? He goes, nah, bro. I think he understood a little bit my situation. I yeah. think he understood that. Without you saying it. Without me saying anything. Yeah, but yeah. also, I think, you know what? Ratings to him, I don't think he wanted to feel like I'll be embarrassed. So he never mentioned it ever. He just said, oh, yeah, bro. No, I, I can that. grab you. No, it's blessed. Yeah, it's yeah, cool, yeah. man. No, you can ride with us. Listen to some tunes. We've got some unreleased stuff. I was just play it to you. I was like, what? Swear then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Wait. I'm not surprised hearing this about him anyway. It's happened quite the whole time. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. someone that, bro, he kind of makes his life from that. He, the buzz he gets, bro, from helping other people, bro. Like That's wicked, man. It's insane. Yes, how, many yeah, people, yeah. Insane. how many people has he helped? And bro, the funniest thing is, this is about me, but I'm literally made this about Mumsy. But yeah, there's a reason yeah. I've done that. Because if, you're, if you, if you want to talk to me about the beginning of my musical journey, he has everything to do with it. Respect He's got that. everything to do with me getting into the scene. You see, yeah. it's, like, it's, big, no it's big coming me, from you, bro, because exactly. a lot of people, what I've realised, <clears throat> as you know, we've been in the industry for years. Years, bro. And I've seen so many stories and so many people come and go. And the one thing I realized, bro, people forget too quick. 100%. That is probably the biggest reason for why so many, well. yeah, why people fall out and people don't, you know, appreciate or pay homage while they can. For sure, bro. Do you get me, my bro? Yeah. Like, look, you, you must have helped, you've helped so many people now get confidence, come up now. Because it's coming to your time now where you've, be, you're actually an established artist now. I so when know. you've come Trying, to, yeah. yeah, mashallah, bro, you've gone really far and course. you've actually joined, you know, there's a lot of records that you've jumped on and the records have blown because you're on them. You know, again, I don't want to beat no one up because it makes me, I'm not I'm putting no one down. Mm. Because you know your musical, the experience you've had since the age of five. A lot of people must think it's come just because you met Mumsy, but you've actually been into this, like you said, from such yeah, a young I, age, I, bro. Do you, know, do you know what's crazy? You know what the, what the beautiful, beautiful thing about my relationship with Mumsy? Mm. It's a give and take. Do you know why? Because, yeah, I will forever, till the cows come home, say, to, say that. Mumsy opened this door. You know this music career yeah. and studio and this. I was going to a studio before I met Mumsy. I've been in the studio before. But you know how to, you know, there's a saying, right? If you give someone a fish, they're going to ask for a fish the whole life. But if you teach them how to fish, they'll be able to fend for themselves. Oh, yeah. Mumsy yeah. never yeah, gave yeah. me a fish. Yeah. He never said, here you go, here's a fish. He gave you the rod. Mumsy said, here's the fishing rope. Yeah. Go and figure this shit out yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go and figure it out. Pause. But in your own way. You're not me. You're not Mumsy Stranger. You are niche. Yeah. But I'll tell you what. You know, from this house, there's been loads. But it's what you make of it, your own self. And the great thing is, is like I said, it's give and take. Mumsy introduced me to, and this is coming now to my knowledge of like, Desi music and things. Yeah. I got into that stuff after meeting Mumsy. You know, like yeah. learning about Punjabi music. He was like, bro, you should sing in Punjabi. I was like, yeah. You At that point, Hindi. did you know how to speak? Even a you little know what bit? crazy thing is? I used to sing like Hindi songs, like here and there. Okay, you yeah, know, just yeah. like jokes, covers and stuff. Yeah. When I showed him that, he goes, bro, you what? You singing? You singing Hindi as well? You yeah. singing Punjabi? I was like, I try, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't understand it, man. I don't. Yeah, to this yeah, day, yeah. I don't. Man. But I got ask yes. I'll be like, bro, yeah. what does this mean? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But I like. Do you know what it is? I love. I love music, and I like whether it's Punjabi, yeah, whether it's Hindi. Your pronunciation is. Absolutely bang on. See, because well, we're, we're going to go on to your whole musical journey. Yeah, we're getting yeah, the yeah. whole background. Yeah. We are going to go into, obviously, you know, the big breakthrough yeah, man. that came. So, bro, let's move on to carry on from there now. Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, yeah. you've joined the Asian industry now, you know, kind of fast forward and get down. Yeah. There, I think, for me, a defining moment for you was when you dropped that Dunya cover. Yeah. Now, what yeah. I mean by that, bro, is not that you weren't making bad music or you weren't not, you know, you weren't making good music. Every artist has a time. 
Yeah. Every artist has one song or one project yeah. that blows them up. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember when I was sitting there, everywhere I went, I am hearing this Dunya cover. Especially on TikTok. From my standing, house. No, standing that, by you. Yeah, stand yeah, by yeah, you. Yeah, that's it, yeah. And I remember everywhere I went, yeah, if, same. whether it was a lounge, whether yeah. it was a restaurant, whether it was my own house, with my wife, whoever it was, they're playing that song. And it's funny because you end up singing it for my little son. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> and it was such, like, such an iconic song. Now, I want to know, bro, when people watch that music video, mm-hmm, I think this hit me when I first watched it. I thought, I don't know if you thought the same. You put bigger budgets yep. and you use bigger bro. productions. 100%. And bro. this one felt like it was probably the smallest budget you spent. Um, yep. oh, and to think what you gained from it. What budget, mental. bro? I yeah, spent, what budget? Yeah, yeah. spent nothing on that video. <laughs> I want you to explain. That was word up. I spent <laughs> nothing on that video. What was the full process, bro? Ah, uh, bro, do you know what the craziest thing is, yeah? Because at that point, I had been doing covers, right? Mm -hmm. I had a few covers that had picked up a bit of steam. The Teddy Care Manga D. Yeah, I love that. Like, that, that, that was one of my first. That was a banger. Like, I feel like. One of so my favorites. During my career, and I'm going to come to like defining points, right? Yeah. I had like multiple defining points. And I'm talking about releases now. Let's, you know, you've heard enough about the, uh, about the career defining points with Mumsy and whatever. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But now talking as me as an artist, one of the things I always wanted to do was push Bangla, the Bangla agenda yeah. to show that Bangla is a beautiful language, but the way that I done it, I tried to drip feed it in because there's no point me saying to you, Yaz, or, you know, and uh, saying both of you guys and be like, yo, here's a Bangla song, listen to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're going to be like, bro, what, what are you saying? Yeah, agreed. Because it's not, it wasn't a mainstream South Asian sound, music yeah. sound, because that what, no was, really the, what was the mainstream yeah. South Asian music sound? People in Bangladesh listen to Bollywood, bro. Yep. They listen to Bollywood. Yeah. Right? But Bollywood doesn't necessarily listen to Bangla. Or Pakistan listens to Bollywood. Of course. They got their Urdu music as well. They got Punjabi music. But they don't, it's not on that no, level. It's not, but they don't listen to, they don't listen to Bangla. Do you <clears> know what I mean? How yes. do we drip feed this language? How do we make people understand? So what I thought is, uh, let's get the biggest songs in, in, in the mainstream. And I hate using the word mainstream, right? Yeah. Because mainstream is, it's in context. And it's um, mainstream, for example, mainstream in India is Bollywood. Of course. Mainstream in India is Bollywood. Yeah. yeah. Mainstream in US is is well right now it's like very hip hop and trap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mainstream in the UK is right where was it drill at one point. Yeah. Do you know what I mean mainstream is relative to where you are? To where you are, yeah, of course. I always say that, right? Hundred percent. So let let me get some of these mainstream Bollywood records and put my spin on it because I can sing it. But what I wanted to do is put a verse in Bangla because you know why I wanted to put a word, verse in Bangla. Yeah, in the, yeah. I did the same. Teri Kher Mangadi. I done the same thing. Do you know why I done it? Because I thought. People that like this song are going to listen to the song anyway. Regardlessly. If I, if I sing it well, they're going to listen to it. But if they hear this Bangla verse, they're going to be like, yo, I don't understand this, but this sounds nice. Yes. But it's in a song that I already understand. And it's in the so same melodies. It's in the well. same melodies. Yeah, yeah. It's, in the same, what you're it's in the same Absolutely. kind of, you're in the same context here. You're in the same bracket. Yeah. So they, they kind of understand what's going on here. Yeah. If you're talking about Teddy Ken Mangadi and then you put a Bangla verse, you already know that a Bangla verse is going to be, a, I'm not going to talk about the Bangla verse as something completely different. Exactly. Talking about me in a drop top car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be about the lyrics, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's why. I, so all right, if, it, if this lyrics. No, but that's what, sound like nice, me as a listener, that's what made me want to listen yeah. to it. Because when you're saying Teddy Ken Mangadi and you're saying, in Bengali in my head I'm thinking of still that must mean that he cared about exactly yeah, yeah, my yeah, point yeah, yeah. my point exactly yeah, my yeah, point yeah. exactly so by doing that I managed to drip feed yeah. and almost subliminally include the Bangla music on non-Bengali is that's it. that was the main thing my thing is non-Bengali is let me get because Bangla people are going to listen to Bengali music anyway of course that I already knew and that was my plan because I was like no one done anything in Bangla to that level yet so let me push the agenda out. let me push it out and and there was a lot of people but I wanted to you know like that Bengali and that Bollywood thing yeah, you know yeah. to because because again Bollywood was the pinnacle how do we push that towards the pinnacle and make it so that it's a seamless yeah, uh, I get you. Seamless I get transition. what you're trying to so it's do. So like part and of mainstream did. as well. So Teddy Care yeah. was number yeah. one. That was a defining moment because that blew up. That yeah. was like, whoa. People yeah, yeah, like, whoa, yeah. what's going on here? Yeah. Then came Bangla Medley. Bangla Medley was a complete throw-off because Bangla Medley actually was done because it was paying homage and to the heritage and the Bengali knowledge, Bengali folk knowledge that I knew. Right. And I didn't know it would do the numbers that it did. I had no idea. I just done it. I'm, can I be... Straight up with you. No one knows this. The only two people that know this is me and DJ Kai. We done this because we were pissed off yeah. because of one Mela didn't book us. 
Seriously? I was pissed off because a uh, Mela didn't book me because they were like, it was a Bengali Mela and they said, oh, Nish's music is not Bengali enough. It's mixed Seriously? with uh, uh, Hindi and Punjabi. I was like, ah, oh, not Bengali enough. All right, wait, wait. So then I'd done That's that. That's when a villain was born. You know, <laughs> I literally, you know what's funny? People say Bangla Medley was done a thing. Bangla Medley, like, I'm ashamed to say it, bro. It was, it was done, done in anger, wasn't it? It was done based on spite and anger. Yeah. I done it out of anger because I was like, you lot pissed me off. Mm. So now I need to do this. I need to release Bangla Medley. And to show you, man, that I can do these Mela Bengali songs yeah. and I'm going to do it better. That's what, what was happened. That's what happened with it. Mm. The rest was history, bro. Because that, Bang- Bangla Medley, I believe, opened doors for a lot of Bengali artists. Yep. Because a lot of bang- people, or people with B- Bangladeshi heritage, yeah. to, I think that opened them up. Because after Bangla Medley, but I'm not saying I was the first one to do stuff like that. Habib done stuff with Krishna. My, my Bangla Medley bit was based off Habib Wahid's Krishna uh, uh, rendition. Right. There was people that did those songs. But bro, let me tell you something. After that, people realized, they were like, yo, we can mix these Bangla folk songs and make our own songs out of, of it. Of course. And bro, how many mans have done it, bro? Yep. A lot of mans have done it. See, that's the thing I was just going to come on to next, because obviously we know, if you look at the industry now as a whole, the, the whole Bangladeshi community, I believe, is in, the, in such a strong place right now. I'm so happy. And I think it's the strongest it's been. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. The foothold they've got in the BBC at the moment. Yeah. The amount of talent, yep. not just yourself, other artists as well. But Loads I do of honestly artists, believe, yeah. and it's not just because you're here. I know a lot of them personally. And I've got a lot of respect for everyone. Mm. But I do believe you led the line. Yeah. And what I mean by that, bro, is... You're the most known. The most known, not just... Because you're an out musician. Mm. Yeah. There are a lot of people that you know, transition into doing this stuff yeah. as maybe for the clout, the hype, or whatever reason. And again, like I said, bro, I respect everyone that's doing it. Of course. But I believe you led the line with that. And I mean ahead of everybody. Why? Because I feel it comes from within you. Yeah. It's what you take so seriously. You're wearing the green today. That yeah, shows exactly. the love for the... the <laughs> I, no, see no, the, I, I see the Martian watching that. Yeah, Come got on. The, got the <laughs> you know I mean? PRX and this is the thing, What I mean is, I believe you led the line and what that gave other people was confidence. Yeah. Now, hold on a minute, man. We've been hiding for too long. 100%. We need to come out. It's a bit like what I said, what I said about Imran Khan, yeah? When he did the whole unforgettable movement. Yeah. yeah. It was iconic. It was a very iconic, iconic moment iconic. in music history. Full yeah. stop. And I believe what he did was he brought back that Punjabi Pakistani sound, yeah. which I believe was missing for Since decades, the, yeah. right? I and I believe with the, the whole Bengali side, I reckon with you coming out, it's become a thing where I saw so many other guys who were missing for a while yeah, yeah. and they've come out with guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you and I'm going to say something quite truthful as well. Mm. And again, this is, a, this is an open, this is a safe space, right? Yeah, of course. You know, at the end of the day, I think even along my career, like one of the things, I had a lot of struggles. I had a lot of, you know, and, of and, this, is the, and, and this is the type of mindset that I'm on right now. From, I had a lot of negativity. I had a lot of hate. I had a lot of, um, I had a lot of that stuff, right? Yeah, as, as you would. Because I, I also felt that, and a lot from my own, amongst my own community as well. Mm. I felt like amongst my own musical community, I had a lot of this, you know. I, I think what it was, I could be completely wrong, but in my mind, I took it as like, oh, I'm with Mumsy and I'm getting the backing of Mumsy and I'm basically this golden child that's basically, Mumsy's giving all of his resources to me and I'm doing the Bangla stuff. But I'll tell you one thing, even, even coming, like moving front, I, I met Mumsy back in 2015, bro. It's what, eight years now? Yeah. I think in those eight years, I've learned so much, not just about the music, but about myself as well. Because maybe, bro, the truth is maybe I was even in the wrong. Maybe I, I, I feel this sometimes I, and I have this, reg- not regret, but I have this feeling in me that, you know what, maybe... Maybe because I was getting everything, people weren't getting everything. Maybe, maybe all they wanted me to do was just share the space a little bit. But the maybe they that's w- just your kismet, isn't it? Maybe yeah, they just, you know maybe just, maybe they just wanted me to share the space a little bit. And yeah. to be fair, bro, at this stage in my career now, what I want to do is be that person to help share the space. And the truth of the matter is, bro, why I'm so. You know, my vision at the beginning of my music career, bro, I just wanted Bangla music to do well. I just wanted people to recognize it, bro. It was nothing about me being the biggest or me being the first, nothing yeah. like that. Bro, I just wanted it to do well. But this I just is why, because you had genuine intentions. I, I wanted, I wanted the scene. Why. Yeah. You know, like the, the, the Punjabi music scene, the Hindi yeah. music scene, Bollywood scene. They had a scene. We didn't have a scene. Yeah. I just wanted the scene. I just wanted people to be like, oh yeah, the Bangla music scene. That word, bro, 
that meant everything to of me. Of course, of I course. I think now it's an accepted term anyway. Yeah, yes. You know, the Bangla music. And if you look at now, everything's Bangla. BBC Bangla, this Bangla. Yeah, yeah. And I believe it's all of you as a collective. 100%. What I mean by that, bro, you bring one part of it. But then there's Mumzi, there's Shah, there's exactly. Ixi, there's you know, Bilal Shah, there's Bilal, Mazi, there's Kazi, yeah. people, yeah. Big up Mazi Kazi on the camera. Though. Of course, I yeah. feel like everyone got together. They've created their own scene. Bro, and I reckon it's every one of you. Whether there's in, there's even people like Musa out in the states, you know, yes, Master yes. D. Exactly. There's all of these like, these guys. Like, I was they, gonna come onto your US stuff because yeah. you know, there's so much with you, bro. That is, yeah, yeah. It's like a proper pattern what you've done, and you're leaving your footprint in every, and everyone can see that. Yeah. And hence why we wanted you on because. There's, you're not just a one trick pony with you there's exactly. so many things like yeah. going on to your you know how you got to sing in Punjabi so well like the first thing I said to Mumzi was that boy's surely not Bengali bro because <laughs> yeah he's fully Bengali bro my and first you single know, was Punjabi exactly and mm. me being a songwriter in Punjabi I said there's no chance the that delivery was amazing innit yeah. I couldn't even put a fault on it bro yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm one of them people normally I can put a fault you know on what something. my friends call me they call me a parrot <laughs> you know, when, yeah, I, you go. when I hear yeah. something, I convey, you know, any like, language, if they say it, any accent, I'm just like, yeah, I do mad accents as well. It's very funny. Hey, but yeah, this yeah. is what I mean with you. The, the talent is, you know, when we brought you on, we did say multi talented. Of course. And sometimes you use that word as you're trying to gas someone up, or, but with you, we genuinely felt like yeah. it applied to you. Do you know what I'm trying to say, bro? So I, I think the passion just kind of, I think one, one of the things that I would say as well about my music is whatever work I do, I'll give 110% into it. And I think the passion in what I'm doing. Yeah. Is 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 able to be seen or heard in the product? Yeah. In the whether it's the music, whether it's music videos. You know, well, you guys know I edit and I make and of course, I direct yeah, music yeah. videos. So it's just the the love and of the of the creativity of it. I'm I'm a very passionate person. I put everything into it. But that's man. what I'm saying. What I said before, because you had genuine in, uh, intentions yeah. of like you, like you said, you didn't want to just be the biggest person out there and a celebrity. You wanted to put Bungla on the map, and that's Bro, exactly what I, I feel can, like you know. Done. What I'm going to be honest. I, I consider myself very lucky. In some respects, I always, I always count my blessings. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like I did work, bro. I put in of the work. No, you put in a lot I of time and work, effort, bro. bro. And like you said, work. the hate, and that's what, what you know. That was going to be my next question, bro. We're talking about all your success, and you know, we're saying all the right stuff. You know, mm. paying homage to what you've done. But bro, everyone knows with with success, there's always comes a big element of hate. Hundred percent. And a big general. I say jealousy. Whether yeah. you want to put it down to Nazar, mm. and you all know, you know, different to that, bro. Yeah. And you know, we just all obviously recently, everyone knew you came back from a very serious in, uh, illness. For sure, bro. Alhamdulillah, yeah. you're looking a lot better now. Thank you, bro. Yeah. And bro, I feel great. Yeah, 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 alhamdulillah, yeah. bro. Alhamdulillah. And obviously, people that don't know, you will be releasing a a podcast soon. Yeah, about yeah. Your, I will be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Soon. I'll I'll I'll, I'll, be, I'll speak more about it soon. But um, yeah, with me more so than I think. Do you know what it is? Is and you know what's crazy? It's that that period of my time when I was mm. diagnosed in 2020, yeah. November 2020, um, up until you know, alhamdulillah, when I when I was in remission, yeah. I think that really made me become a man, if that made sense. I really learned things that, and like I said, I I I'd come back on reflect and you know, like hate and negativity and stuff like that. Yo, before I might have had that. Uh, you know, you know, you know, having illnesses and and stuff like that make you realize that you know none of this is important. If you think about Absolutely, it, brother. if you deep it, bro, none of it's yeah. important. None, none of it's important. That's exactly what I was going to come onto. None of it's actually. important, bro. So you know what I did, bro? Alhamdulillah, what I, what I tried to do, you know anyone that I had any sort of, you know, like any sort of discrepancy with, yeah. not even beef, bro. I don't, even, I don't have beef with people, bro. Yeah. But any sort of, if I even upset them. Yes. Do you know what yeah. I went, bro? I went and, I went and apologized. I went and squashed it. I, went, I said to them as well, I said, if I did something wrong, forgive me. Yeah, of course. Ask for forgiveness as well of course. Because even bro We're human Even I could have done something wrong Even I could have even said something That might have Unintentionally hurt yeah, 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 yeah. them. Do you, I don't do ever try and do it intentionally yeah. But my thing is And what I did is I just squashed it with everyone But what I am now Is a very closed book Because of my Health and stuff like of that course. I'm still Are you more aware of Would you say that you know You're a bit more careful With posting Or do you think? Do you take the word Nazar a bit oh, more seriously now? Million percent, million percent. I believe that it's evil eye and, and Nazar and all of that stuff. That it, I believe it exists, yeah. and at the same time, I think now I just want to post what I want people to see. Yeah. You know about the about what I'm doing, really, isn't it? Like at the end of the day, like my my social media is 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 a real estate. For yeah. what I am as an artist, at the end of the day, it's uh, you go and you go on Zoopla and you go on a house, and basically yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what my, my that's yeah. what my social media is for me. If you want niche and you want all the best bits of niche, that's what you're gonna go. And Do find. you know what? In my personal opinion, like not not firing at anyone, but like it's sad because I haven't gone through this experience as of yet. 
you never know when my time will come. But mm. do you think it's unfortunate sometimes when you feel like death's knocking at your door? For sure. That is when you start reflecting on what you've done in life. And that's when you go and start apologizing when really and truly we should be doing that in the first place anyway. Bro, I'm telling you, you know, you know when, I, when I learned that and, I'm, said, bro. And, and, and I'm not going to lie, man. I'm telling you, as a, as a man, you know what? Yeah. I felt more like a man after I'd done it. I'm you know, good. after I'd done it, I yeah. felt more like a man. You know, I realized, you know, you know this beef and this negativity, it's young. It's not worth it, bro. It's young. Yeah, man. You know, you're a boy. If you've got, you're, you're, you're a boy, man. You're a child. You're Especially a child. in this industry, like touching back on it because of you're in the music industry as well. It's like, we spoke about it with Mumsy and everyone as well. Like not many people help each other within the industry. And then that's when everyone starts becoming a bit sour. And before you even know it, you haven't even got a problem with X, Y, Z. But yeah. there, is, there is some sort of problem there where you don't I, chat I, to I, each other. That's crazy. I never... And, and the f funniest thing is, is, it's not even about a problem for me. Yeah. It was more about just negativity. And you know, mm. like, there was, like, clouds over my... Like, these, neg these, these negative clouds over my head. You know, these rain of clouds over my, yeah. over my head. And it was a little bit like, like, like man, why? I thought everyone was supposed to be cool with each other. Yeah. Obviously, I found out that it, it's, not, it's not that way. But one thing I always... Now try and do is make things am amicable. But if I see people, even people that I might have, I'll say salam, bro. Like, bro, like it's free, course, innit? You know, being kind and being nice is free, bro. You, you you lose nothing from it. Free Jana points. You love you lose you lose nothing from it, honestly. And not even yeah. on a preaching one, bro. You no, just of lose, course, yeah, you, lo right. you lose nothing from it. So I think obviously naturally, bro. You know, after after everything that you've been through, mm. I think it's more. It becomes more of a thing when you've been through something. Mm, you know, yeah. when, when we're flying and we're high, everyone, so many people think, well, not so many people, but people generally think we're not going to die. Mm. Yeah. That's why we live the way we live. Yeah. If we knew we're going to die, if we knew we're close to death or we knew, you know, this is a situation, I think your whole mindset changed. I think that's probably what you had to fight them demons. Mm, yeah. And the way you, even with the way you've come up and now saying, bro, look, I look at life completely different. I yeah. do, yeah. Completely 100%. different. And I think that's only because you were so, probably one of them people who always thought, I'm young, I'm good looking, I've got my whole career, I've got yeah, this, I've got looking. that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, bro. Yeah. When, yeah. I think when something like this happens, it makes you put, it puts everything to perspective, in it, bro? Like, especially this industry beef, which I think is the most pathetic thing ever. Bro, I think it's such, uh, it's literally the biggest waste of time, bro. Like, industry beef, like, I'm not being funny, bro. Why do we have industry beef like where, like where, you know, like where Drake and, 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 and Jay-Z and <laughs> yeah, these people, yeah, yeah. bro. Exactly, bro, we're bro. still yeah. grinding. Yeah. We're still grinding, bro. I'm, we're trying to, we're still getting to places, bro. There's still so much we can do as artists to get to where we want to be. Alhamdulillah for where we are, but bro, yeah. come on, man. Let's allow it, innit? You know, when I see egos and stuff like that, I just think, bro, like, what are we even doing, man? Come on, man. Like, it's not even... See, we're talking of egos, yeah? It gives, it gives us a bad name, man. Tell, tell me something about this industry. Because yeah. you know, every time me and Seth have someone who's in the music industry, we love asking this question, yeah? Mm. And the question is, why do you feel that in this industry in particular, there's a lack of support? And there's a lack of, you know, help for one another. Like, there could be one guy who's leading the pack. And for some reason, instead of thinking, hold on a minute, this is my chance to become a certified OG. I can be a certified guy in this game and I have the power to do so. Why do you think instead of helping everyone and becoming the Skepta or the Stormzy or the Wiley of the industry, they'd rather go their own way and forget that these people even exist? That's Why do you think you, that you happens know, more in our industry? You, you know, when you're a big fish in a small pond, yeah, and all yeah. of the other fishes around it. I love using fish as, as a yeah, yeah, Bengali in me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You bro, said it, not me. If you're, a, if you're a, I, I, bro, listen, I love fish. Innit? Yeah, come on. Um, Cod only. Uh, bro, I, bro, a bit bro, of bang out bear fish, bro. Mm. I love all fish. Love it. <laughs> Are you the Hootkey Shira fam? I've, Hootkey Shira. One million percent, bro. Yeah? One million percent. I'm I'll Bengali. Real, I like to it as well. You know when people say, oh, Bengali is like fish? I'll be like, yes. Yes, I can do. And what? Yeah, I can do, bro. But yeah, you know, when you're when you're a big fish in a small pond. Yeah. Yeah. You're only gonna look around what's in your vicinity, right? Yeah. And you're gonna think you're the you're the guy. And don't get me wrong, bro. Don't get me wrong. I, there's been times where I felt, you know, like ego is such a thing, right? You feel it. We all feel it as artists, as humans, as men. We still we feel it. No, we, 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 that, we do yeah, get yeah. it. We do get it. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. We get it. Yeah. But it's how you manage that and how do you use it. So I feel like ego in a, it. Like for example, there's a difference between having an ego. And knowing your worth and knowing what your worth and what your weight is, right? Yeah. 
if you know, like, for example, I want to let someone speak to me in a certain way if, if, like, if I'm showing respect to them. Yeah. If I'm chatting to a normal person on the road and I'm being respectful and then they're, like, being rude to me, I'll be like, no, like, what are you talking about, man? Like, don't speak to me. Like, I showed you respect. Respect is, give, is a give and take. If I spoke to someone like, like an idiot yeah. and they spoke to me back, I can have no complaints. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I can't have any complaints. So it's, it's, a, it's a give and take. It's a, it's a respect thing as well. The thing is, I, I always say this. This is a wild take, by the way. Yeah. But I always say, like, you know, musicians, whether you're Drake, whether you're me, whether you're... And I don't like putting me and Drake. I'm not... Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> not putting... Yeah, 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 yeah. like, at the end of the day, we still do the same job. It's like, bro, it's like if you're, you know, if you're a, a restaurateur, for example, yeah. you own a little takeout, you know, or you own... You know, McDonald's. the entire chain of McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, of course. What, what industry? Still in the catering industry? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. You understand you what I'm saying? You both do writing. You both do. You understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, of You're course. still in that industry, right? Yeah. So, but what? But what is it like? If if you met a McDonald's CEO and you said, uh, and and they met someone in like you know with a restaurant, like there's a lot. Like, right, I'll give you an example. Um, with one of a uh, uh, couple of these brothers that we know, right? The, uh, the guys from Bank, Fabio and Jan. Lovely, lovely guys, right? They, they, I've known them for for a while. They own this uh, this beautiful restaurant and and lounge or whatever. Them, yeah. But they know that my family background, or me, not me myself, but my family background is Indian restaurants. Restaurants, yeah. right? They're big boys, bro. They they they're killing it. They're doing great. We've got our our humble um, family business that's kind of kept us going. Yeah, right. Alhamdulillah, it does well. But Alhamdulillah, yeah. But they're like to us, oh, so you get it. They go to me, oh, you get it. Your family in the in the um, in the yeah, industry, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So do you understand why I'm making the comparison? Hundred percent. Because he's here, I'm probably here. Yeah. But the respect is there because he sees that I'm in the same playing field as him. See, I always see it as no, 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 exactly. And, what and, I, and I'm going to that in music. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you, you're in the same playing field. Of course, there's good artists and there's bad artists. Bro. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's the same. Like some people are great. But even but even good and bad boys is a perspective, isn't it? Of course. My, some my, artists who people don't like, they still have fans. Bro, yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. There's a lot of artists whose music that I don't necessarily fuck with. Yeah. But. I respect them. You still respect them, yeah. I respect oh, yeah. them. Yeah, and I've told them, I go, do you know what? Your music isn't really my cup of tea. Yeah. But you know what? Respect, man. You you got, you, you're you yeah. doing something that people love. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing something. People might not like my stuff. You got to accept that as well. I got to accept that there's going to be people but out 100%. there that don't rate my thing. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. That that don't, that, you know when they hear my music, they're like, turn that shit off. Yeah, the perfect I way to put it, it bro. Like Mumsy, Mumsy decided yeah. to help you out. Decided to put you um, on the road to yeah. music. Now, he could have easily thought, you know what? He's another Bengali guy that's coming on here to try to fuck with my music. Nah, I don't want him to have that. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm going to get it. No. He put you on there because he knows, like, bro, what's written for me is written for me. If I decide to, like, give out my expertise and my, how do I say it, my teachings to this yeah, person, of course. Yeah. it doesn't mean that we're still going to be the same piece of person or he's going to overtake me. Whatever's for, for written for me, written you know what I rate Mumsy? You know why Mumsy is, again, I'm bringing, bringing up, you know why Mumsy is. This podcast will be named Yeah, yeah. He's such a G. Do you know why he's such a G? And also, he's. What, what he can flex with. Yeah. Bro, he's got me on his right yeah. and DJ Lion on his left. Come on. Bruv. That's a team. Who can say, and he can say, yo, these two, man, like, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're my from peeps. my home. They're, my, yeah, yeah, they're exactly. from my home. But that's what I'm trying to say. You see what I'm saying? Like, he, he Do you know that's a big flex, you know? No, 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 no. That's it's a true. big flex, you know? Of course. It's true. But, but, but you know with him especially I, I, I single him out that's some Jay-Z shit yeah, yeah bro yeah, some yeah. I, I've always singled him out and I always yeah. will it's not because he's my best friend off camera or off, yeah. you know whatever we do mm. but it's the way he is the way I see him and talk to him just like you yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's always about I want him to blow I want him to blow and I yeah. look at him sometimes and think bro how are you so humble yeah. like you could be such a different guy you know you could be doing so many things and not worrying about what he thinks you know especially your situation mm. the amount he speaks about you is like a young and like, he speak like you're, he's your at times it feels like he's your guardian bro yeah yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I feel like he's my musical yeah, he guardian does, he does, yeah, that's it, yeah. he has he's my musical yeah, yeah. guardian and yeah. the way he says that i always feel like bro man you proper care for people and then mm. it's just that sort of person is very unique and we must look after them sort of people of course yeah. and that's why they're him, precious they're, yes. they're precious, very precious bro, yeah. bro. and i feel i wish that every there's not week, enough of those people bro no 100 percent. but there's, there's not, not enough people like you as well who, who, appreciate, big up, that. who appreciate that like a lot of people could easily said yeah, yeah and, and love protect your friendship bro because your yeah, friendship army, always your brotherhood army. you know what's crazy powerful you know what i said to him i said to him i go if we ever disagree or if we ever fall out 
let's throw music in the bin. Yeah. Let's just. <laughs> I said I'll still come and see the kids. I'll still, you know, like yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. I got a relationship with you in it. Like, of course, man. I always said to him, I said, I go, if I ever fall out with you, I'm stopping music in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, you know what, Nish? <laughs> it's coming up to like an hour. I think you know. I've always said, I know you had to be somewhere as well. Yeah. And we started the podcast in Mumsy. Finished we'll finish it. With so before, <laughs> we, bro, before we wrap up, yeah. we just want to say to you that you know, there's so many people, bro, who want to become music artists. So yeah. many people that look up to you. They would love to get you know, their foot in the door. Yeah. What would be your advice to people? And don't tell them to go to knock on Mumsy's door. Nah, do you know what? <laughs> okay, best bit of advice I would give, and in fact, this is something that I always say to anyone that would that ask for advice. Yeah. You know, figure out your skill set, what you're good at, mm. right? And, and, and maybe I'm saying this that no one else has told you. You know, if you can't sing, don't try and be a singer. That I'm going to say that. <laughs> but Real if you're fair. good at something, but this is, this is my, my, going back to... If you're good at something, if you're, uh, you know, like a great producer or you've got a great vocalist, focus on being, you know that, focus a lot of your energy on doing that. That's the best bit of advice I would say. Focus on being the best at that because mm. if you're good, and this goes to like, if there's any parents listening or anything like that, that's got young children that want to see, that are curious about what it is that they want their children to do. Bro, if your kids want to become a doctor, they want it and they're good at it, let them be a doctor. Yeah. If they're great at tennis, and they want to be a tennis player, let them be a tennis player. My thing is always just make sure you pursue and carry on doing what you're good at, what you're, what is in your skill set. Because the last thing you want to do is be in a, be in a career or be in, be in a place that, where you're doing something that you're, that you're not the best at it. Like yes. that's not in your skill set, that's not the best thing in your skill set. Do you know what I mean? 100%. No, if respect. that's not the best thing in your skill set, then that shouldn't be your career. Whatever's the best thing in your skill set, whatever the thing that you're most talented in your skill set, that should be the career. That's what you should pursue. I don't know many things, bro, but I'll tell you what, I know how to sing. So <laughs> I thought, let me just do that. <laughs> Smashed it, my bro. So bro, bro, no, bro, bro before we go, you know, we have to ask the issue. Yeah, yeah, go yeah. On, Nish, you on. know we're going to ask you. You know, you go said on. you love to sing. Yeah. We want like a just a cappella of anything you want. <laughs> anything you want. End the podcast. Uh, nice. What should I? Are you not told me, man? Maybe do a little mix in it. Yeah, maybe do a little mix in it. A little, a little dunya English. English. Yeah. Right. My voice is a bit whack, but Bro, I'll, I'll sing you something. It can't be it's whacker than mine. Right. Yeah. So you're good. Ah, right, let me. Uh, mm, I can never be without your love. You know me. Your love is a modern and my blood it runs deep. Whatever you want in life, you know it's on me. I'll be standing by you till the end Yeah, we built it over trust I'll never get enough You got me all in love with you So many things I do And girl, you never want to judge And baby, you're the reason That I ever fell in love that's it, bro. Hey. My voice is not on it today, but you know what? I'll give you yeah, that. You, you, you look our brothers, innit? I'll give you lot something. Come on, man. Of course, I love for that, my bro. Bro, at that point... At that Thank point. you very much You're for coming welcome, on, my man. brother Nish. Listen. Nish. Bless you, bro. Thank you so much. Thank you, mate. So okay. there you have it, guys. That was the super talented Nish. So if you liked what you saw, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And hit the bell notification so you don't miss none of our uploads. Until the next episode, peace out. <laughs>